Hi, everyone. Hi, Kyle. Is that you? Wait, no, it's not. It's someone else. And oh, god damn it, another Evolution is Dumb video. Why is it that these guys who have these opinions all appear to be the exact same person, only not? It's uncanny and it's kind of creepy. All of you doing the same things the same way with the same style or lack thereof. Oh well, we're here now. Let's dive right into this mess, shall we? Today I'd like to talk about a topic that I've been researching a lot and thinking a lot about lately, and that is evolution. Now by researching and looking into and thinking about, and what have you, a lot, does that involve consuming media purely from creationist creators in order to reaffirm your bias that evolution am bad, and whatever version of more than likely creationism you believe is good? Because, well, of course that's what it is. That's what it always is. God forbid one of these guys actually pick up a book written by actual experts in the field that is also, mind you, up to date, and isn't just some pop science magazine to boot. For some reason, they just never do that, probably because they have no interest in proving themselves wrong. You know, like real scientists try all the time. Isn't that funny? So first, let's just clarify, this video I will be talking about macroevolution. Oh god no, did you see it? Right at the end there, yeah? Dr. Frickin' Dino. This guy is a Kent Hovind fan. Not that we really need that screeny to know that, because of course anyone who talks about macroevolution, like it's a term that fucking means anything, is of course likely to be quoting everyone's favourite convict. Kenty Doodah. God damn it, shit's about to get real silly now, innit? Which is the idea that all species have a single common ancestor, some single-celled organism many millions of years ago. Known to everyone else as evolution, although the idea that we came from one single-celled organism is probably unlikely. There's a good chance that if one could have formed, I would imagine more would have and then they moved on from there. Although that's not idle fact, but just my cold hard speculation. Anyway. That theory is false. Oh well, I guess we're done here. He said it's am false, and that's really all you need to do to discount a science that has done so much work and has so much evidence and research behind it that you couldn't fully absorb it in a single lifetime. But on the other hand, a hilariously common creationist to person with a brain, ironically evolution story, is that they learned all of the creation science, thought themselves prepared to take on the fake real science, and soon learned that there was so much more behind the thing that they thought was a lie that they could either continue lying to themselves or accept that creation is bullshit. Isn't that fun? That is illogical and I'm going to talk about that this in this video. I am pretty sure you guys have no idea what the word logical means and by extension of course you don't understand what it means to be illogical either. All while being fairly illogical yourself. Logic is simply the idea one thing follows from another. In fact, it doesn't even have to be true to be logical. There are plenty of ideas that are perfectly logical, but don't stand up to how the universe actually works. The lucky thing about evolution though is it is both logical and actually factual in the unibobs. It's just cool like that. But I'm not talking about microevolution or adaption, which is just the idea that that evolution is a fact and creationists needed a way to continue to be the ignorant rubes that they are whilst accepting truths that were just far too loud to ignore. So instead of accepting the thing that would absolutely refute their current worldview, they cut off its nose and taped it to the back page of their book and pretended that it was always there. And that tiny disfigured chunk of the idea completely explained everything without making them sound like idiots. But of course, you can't do that. Evolution is the whole thing. There is not micro, there is no macro, there is evolution, and you need to get the fuck over that and stop being wrong all the time. A species can change over time and adapt to its environment um, to help it to survive in whatever environment it's in. 
Yes, that's called evolution. The thing about your whole micro idea is that there is nothing that makes that stop at. It's still the same thing. And in fact, we see through, you know, evidence that evolution will not just stop at any given point, except for like the extinction of a species. Things change over time and they will change so far as to simply not be the same thing anymore. Until you guys can tell us what mechanism you have observed that will stop species speciation, then you need to stop pretending that there is a difference between any of your made-up subsections of sciences. This is what Darwin observed on the island of the Galapagos when he was looking at the finches and the different beak sizes that they had. That's something that we have observed and noticed. Yeah, it was more than just beak sizes. One of the more profound observations was that of ring species, something that cannot be explained by your lot in any way that makes any sense, but is a perfect fit for evolution. The quick version is, species starts here, two offshoots adapt in different environments. As they loop round and come to meet up again, the two newest variants can no longer produce viable offspring, and yet all the rest can breed with their neighbors almost like they evolved to be different that if you have a beak size that helps you get more food then you will see more of that beak size in the future because those birds are able to survive better but where does it stop if i have this bird that evolves its beak to reach deeper and deeper into a food source and then say it starts using its wings as makeshift shovels to help dig and it loses most if not all of its vision as it spends increasing amounts of time underground to reach its rich food source and now that beak itself changes to be less obstructive until it changes to simply being an opening with none of the beak-like qualities and so on and so forth. Where do these changes stop? What stops them? Why would they stop if it helps them to survive better? That's right, it wouldn't because microevolution is fucking nonsense. So, of course, I'm not saying anything bad about microevolution or adaption. That is confirmed. We all know that happens. Well, of course you're not going against microevolution. Daddy Crime Lord said it, and it must be true, because of how honest felons tend to be. Is it poisoning the well when it's both true and hilarious? I don't know, and I don't care, because it doesn't change the fact that that specific version is nonsense. However, macroevolution is something that has not been observed or confirmed. Yes, it has. Darwin's finches are an example of speciation, and we see it in a bunch of other places as well, all the time, whether it be in a lab or in populations over time. The fact that you want to pretend it's not the same thing is not a problem for the actual science, and more that you are unwilling to accept that science, perhaps you should just get the hell over yourself. In fact, the entire idea of macroevolution is that mutations somehow can add information no that's not the entire idea of evolution there's a lot more to the study of evolution than just that however mutations are certainly part of it because mutation simply means change some mutations are good some are bad most are neutral and all of them are a change in what information was there before because that's just how change works which has never been observed we've never seen a mutation add any kind of information or add any kind of functionality what are you talking about yes we have it happens all the time the only reason you would think that it hadn't is because you haven't dared to type the words mutations that add functions into google where you will see plenty of examples and explanations therein the vast majority of mutations are negative no, they f***ing aren't. The vast, vast, vast majority of mutations do absolutely nothing, or so little that it might as well be nothing. That is a complete and total nonsensical fabrication that I can only assume it was from Godfather Hovind. Very few of them are helpful, and when they are helpful, it's just because of random dumb luck. Okay, so what if it's random dumb luck? If any are helpful, that's enough to be useful for evolutionary development. I mean, seriously, let's say that you're right, that most mutations are bad. Okay, so those creatures become worse at survival, and the ones that get the lucky draw become better suited to survive. So we have more of the lucky gene and less of the bad one. So they move forward in the population, and that population changes over time as they gain more lucky mutations. And oh my god, that sounds like evolution, you fucking doofus. Seriously, just sit there and debunk yourself. Go ahead, it's not like that's anyone else here's job, you fucking scab. And, um... 
many of them are actually fatal. Speaking of dumb, I feel like he might have noticed his fuck up of an admission there. And again, if they are fatal, so what? That doesn't change the fact that evolution is a thing. In fact, it would absolutely make sense with how evolution works. In fact, in fact, it would logically follow that the dead animals wouldn't. Oh, what's that thing we've been talking about? All right, survive, you know, because they're dead. Man, you are horrible at this. We would have seen a positive mutation if they were possible. We've done a lot of uh, experiments on this. You just said they were possible. What is wrong with you? This is what creationism does to a person's brain. They can say one thing and then moments later completely contradict it without even skipping a beat, having no idea that what they said was so catastrophically stupid that it's no wonder we feel compelled to make fun of them for it. And then they somehow spin that into them being more right, because why would we be laughing if they were wrong or some shit like that? Man, I can't help it if everything you say is hilarious, even if it is hilariously sad. In fact, we've observed over 3,000 consecutive generations of fruit flies looking for this positive mutation. Well, that's like the opposite of true. There have absolutely been heritable mutations. And in the lab, how is that going to demonstrate the usefulness of those mutations for survival? Flies are better at surviving in lab conditions, great, but not what we are even looking for with those experiments. And isn't it weird that real scientists doing real science haven't come out of them agreeing with you and your and they, in fact, seem to think that evolution is even more true than they did before because that's the nature of having more evidence. Looking for this mutation that adds information, it just doesn't happen. It's never been observed. So is a changing color not new information? That's the thing. Your definition of adding or subtracting information. What are they? What are you looking for? You can't just say adding information because that doesn't actually mean anything. You have to clarify this shit. And if for some reason you can't or won't make it less vague, then don't expect us to take you seriously and don't expect to be able to achieve any useful science that could actually help reflect you that which you think is untrue because that's the thing if you guys could just do better science than the evolvey boys that would go a long way to the fabled debunkaroos but for some reason you can't i wonder why that is i guess because you spend all the sciencing money on fucking boats that don't even work and uh the fact that evolution has been so widely accepted without even knowing that it's possible that we could have evolved from a single-celled organism evolution doesn't actually state that we evolved from a single-celled organism that's got nothing to do with the fact that evolution happens and things change over time all life on this planet could have come from a sentient ball of meat rolling around and shitting out offspring all over the place each of them slightly different from the last and those shitting out their own and so on and so forth until everything was so different that those stopped existing and everything else did so no we don't believe it without knowing that because that would be stupid we believe it because it is the conclusion that has been come to based on the evidence you know the opposite of what creationists do is very surprising to me we've never even seen a mutation that could make evolution possible and yet it's so widely accepted. Or, or, you're wrong and you haven't got a clue what the hell you're talking about. I mean, consider for a moment the types of people who accept it. The hardest. Some of the smartest men, women, and lab coat donning horses alive. And the people who tend to reject it are, well, you know, you. Those peeps who accept it, what if they know something that you don't? You say you've been studying this and yet the first thing you show us is a Hovendaniki still. A man who knows less about evolution than I do and I'm a fucking moron. And as a side note, I do kind of want to just mention abiogenesis is also impossible. We've never observed life coming from non-life. Why the fuck would we? What makes you think that the Earth as it is today has the circumstances to make that possible? Seriously, although we have certainly done experiments that show that life has the possibility of forming sans intervention, although, again, this has nothing to do with the fact that evolution is a thing that happens. Like I said, it doesn't matter where life on Earth started in regards to how evolution works, because it just does. Even in a controlled environment in... 
uh, in laboratories, scientists have never been able to produce life from non-life. Okay, so what? Do you know the amount of things that everyone thought would never ever happen, even within your own lifetime? That will have been the case multiple times until it wasn't. So the fact that currently it appears to have not happened wouldn't change the fact that it could and doesn't make it impossible. And I don't even know why you care. Since doesn't your big book of bullshit say that life was made from non-life anyway, so why are you so threatened? Oh, right, because you don't want to not need the notorious G.O.D. He's notorious because he's a bit of a cunt. So the idea that this just happened randomly billions of years ago um, is kind of hard to believe when we can't even make it happen on purpose right now. At the end of the day, we know how the universe formed. We know that life couldn't have been on the Earth at the start. There is life now. At some point, life had to come from somewhere. So the best explanation that doesn't involve magic or aliens or magic aliens is that some process caused life to form. And we are simply not at an advanced enough stage scientifically in order to figure out how. I really don't see the big deal. So it, I... I am a Catholic, I am a Christian, I believe in the Bible, I believe in a literal six-day creation, I believe that God created all the different kinds, and within those kinds, the species can adapt to their environment and change. Um, really? I would never have guessed you are any or all of those things in like a million billion years. Because it's not like you haven't just given me a video, just chocked full of evidence that would lead me to that conclusion. You see how that works? I know things without needing you to sit there and say them to me, because evidence told me the story already. And that's how we know evolution is a thing, because the evidence told us a story. And at the end of it, it simply says that evolution is a thing that happens, and here's the mechanics for it. It's really not that difficult. But there are limits to that change. And it would be so easy to falsify my belief system. It would be so easy to disprove what I believe in. All that would be needed is a single, genuine missing link. That would disprove my entire belief system. First off, I really think that one piece of evidence should rarely change the entirety of your understanding on a subject, especially when you have such a poor grasp on what evidence even means. But the fact that we have links at all is the reason you have any idea that any could be missing, you staggeringly ignorant buffoon. The only thing that you have proved is dumb today is both you and your worldview, and I'm done. I'm going to go and drink whiskey now because people complain whenever I forget to mention it. Bye! Wait, before you go, I have something super important to tell you. It's life or death. It will change everything forever. Nope. Wait, it's gone. Oh well, probably wasn't important. But while I have you, don't forget to comment, subscribe, and notify. And if you want more of my smexy voice, check out Mrs. Six channel Spoon Star Stories, where I narrate and voice all the videos. And she does the work. And if you want to support the channel, check out the merch store for cool t-shirts, or check out Patreon, memberships, and PayPal to support directly. Finally, follow me on the medias of social to get completely pointless guff and to keep up on the latest releases. Oh, I just remembered what I was going to tell you. Whatever you do, don't touch the-